All right. Yeah, thanks so much, uh, Fabienne, and thanks so much for the, uh, to the organizers and, well, to all of you for coming here and um, giving us the opportunity to present the GMPS dashboard. So yeah, as Fabian mentioned, and, and as you may have noticed, I'm, I'm not Ming. Ming could unfortunately not come as uh, he had some health issues and it's not the time you want to like travel with a flu right now. Um, anyway, to make a, um, a long story short, um, yeah, this was meant to be Ming's talk, and also Ming is the brain and main developer behind the dashboard. So while we um, uh, conceptualized and um, yeah, like developed it together, uh, yeah, Ming, I think, will maintain it in the future in his own lab at uh, UC Riverside, which he's also about to start in, uh, I think, right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, I hope I can give you um, a little bit of my perspective, which perhaps comes a little bit more from the from the user side. And um, yeah, so I'm a, I'm a mass spectrometrist by training, and um, when I think about like my uh, everyday work, and I assume some of you can uh, um, perhaps identify with that, then I love spending time with, with the mass spec itself. So both for hardware development, but also for like running samples, maintenance, and so on. But of course, there's much more um, to our work than that. So we do sample preparation here. For example, Ricardo, who fortunately is also here at this uh, conference right now, we spend some time in the lab. And then obviously we spend also a lot of time with the computer and like when we put like numbers on this It becomes very clear that like this hardware part is actually quite small and like most of the time uh, we spend uh, analyzing data um, uh, Yeah, and like making figures and writing papers and so on so now um, when we think about the software solutions that we can have, I think this conference has been a fantastic opportunity um, to, to get to know many of them. So you may know there are plenty of different like software workflows, pipelines, visualization tools. So it's really like a, this huge like pack, uh, patchwork of different software solutions. And yeah, fortunately, over the years of extensive training, I think most of us become like this highly specialized experts and we have like particular pipelines in our lab and we hopefully make sense uh, out of like the enormous uh, amounts of, of data we, we generate with this uh, fantastic machines. So now uh, when we look at these pipelines, they get, like, we typically um, first need software to acquire the data, then to um, inspect the data, see if it's good, and we process it, we find features, we annotate the spectra, and then we spend a lot of time like, exploring this in like, different like, um, yeah, like, uh, statistical and visualization tools. And then we ideally also validate it again and, and check if that like, couple of uh, features that we prioritized are actually real. And then, Hopefully, we also share this data with the community and like make it accessible for like well also confirmations, but also like reuse um, in perhaps like larger meta studies. So yeah, in, in my case, I, I came up with a um, particular pipeline that is a I think a colorful mixture of uh, uh, vendor tools at the beginning. Then yeah, we try to um, convert our data to uh, um, open source formats, typically MZML with Proteo Wizard. Then yeah, I, I love uh, uh, using MZMine for for feature finding, which I think is a is a fantastic tool. And then we annotate typically with GMPS and Sirius before we then use like a different. <laughs> um, consortium of uh, statistical tools and scripting languages, but also some some GUI tools, um, yeah, to like make sense of the data before we then validate again with with vendor um, software. Typically, I, I really like Qual Browser, um, and then yeah, we make the data public uh, through the massive repository and typically use GMPS also for for reuse and, and larger scale um, meta analysis. So now, as I recently started my, my own lab and also had to um, spend a lot of time with, with people training them um, for, for these tools, it becomes very quickly uh, like, uh, obvious that this is really complicated. And it's, it's really hard, and I think we, we spend like, years to like, master this, this, um, yeah, like different software solutions and, and bring them in um, yeah, like a row for, for effective use. So what if like, all like, these pipelines we could simply um, combine them and like try to like simplify and like put this all in only one software solution. Ideally, so easy that we can like share it um, like with a couple of clicks with like the, the people we train. While of course this is like a really I think uh, hard task and different people I think are, are working on this. So like we try to to come basically up with a yeah a software tool that we call like the GMPS dashboard that is. Very simple, so it's very easy and fast to use, and like ideally also, um, yeah, like reusable and, and shareable with like the the product community, our mentees, was was just a um, a couple of clicks, 
and yeah, as, as I mentioned, like for me now as a, as a new PI, like when I work with like my, my coworkers in, in the lab, this, this really facilitates like direct interactions, right? So I can like get a link sent by my, um, by my PhD student and it's, it's easy and, and fast to, in, to inspect this. But also in a, in a larger group, so as we're working in a very collaborative research environment, not only in my lab, but with Thomas' lab, with Peter's lab, with like a lot of other like research groups and, and we love doing collaborative work. I think a solution like that would make interaction like much easier than like yeah doing like this the analysis and um, different GUI tools on, on our individual computers and then also with the community at large so I think like reproducibility of like software processing is really an issue and when when you review a paper then maybe you ha will have a hard time to like find exactly like the same answer from like some raw files that were ideally shared so I think here also like shareability through the dashboard we hope will, will fa facilitate um, this interaction so and yeah, like to may just give you a little bit of a history of, of the development of the dashboard. So what we came up with or what we thought at the beginning uh, we, we need was simply um, a visualizer for XICs within the GMPS environment because that was not really possible. So we only like looked at MS2 spectra, but like the XICs were, were kind of missing. And we thought, yeah, like why not having a quick web app that directly in the molecular networks we can visualize, you could also display like the XICs and check if there's isomers and maybe some relative quant and so on. and yeah like <laughs> after a little bit of time trying to convince Ming that this would be useful I think we got really excited about it and then um, it kind of like quickly evolved in a, in a larger like yeah like data analysis um, uh, tool and yeah like the dashboard would be here in the middle and when you um, yeah look at this this flowchart we have um, different sources of data where we which we can like directly pull into the dashboard so these come from like um, basically all major public data repositories, but also your own data, so you can track and drop um, your own files into the dashboard. Then we can directly import data from different GMPS tasks, such as uh, molecular networking or feature-based molecular networking. And then, yeah, we can use this to interact with the community, so both with like static interaction or um, also like inter active interaction um, and then we can also launch analysis from there so it's not only a viewer but also basically a portal to do um, additional data analysis and yeah like in, oh, whoops um, in case you're not fully familiar with, with the um, GMPS environment I also wanted to just um, put this a little bit in context so maybe some of you know it for for molecular networking but it has been really exciting to to see it evolve over the years to like this complete or not complete, but like this very um, full environment with a ton of different tools. And I think yeah, I just want to highlight a, um, a few of them. So I think what, what we in the lab use mostly is classic molecular networking and feature-based molecular networking, as well as repository scale analysis such as uh, uh, MAST. And therefore, the dashboard kind of like is now like in the middle, and we can basically launch all this analysis um, directly from the dashboard, and then also from like these different tasks go back in there for visualization purposes. But yeah, to maybe tell you also a little bit of details about what's under the hood, the GMPS dashboard, and that's <laughs> for sure normally Ming's part, but yeah, like it's uh, um, open source, so you can like uh, um, get the source code from, from Ming's GitHub. Um, we have a small infrastructure right now, still running at, at UC San Diego with a 24-core um, CPU. But the dashboard is easily deployable on your own server. So for, I don't know, da data privacy reasons or scalability reasons, once like more people in the community start using it, we can easily deploy it on different servers. So there, yeah, if you're, if you're interested, please um, get, in, get in touch. So the, we, yeah, ideally can like really like scale this and, and make this like available to like the prod community so far i think we had some uh, uh quite some uh tests so there were a couple of conferences like this one where we actually had live demos and we had like a uh, hundred plus synchronous users so in a second we're also going to do a little stress test here um and yeah like the the user numbers are like uh slowly decreasing and there have been quite a couple of uh, lcms files um visualized and analysis um launched but okay, um, enough about uh, the background and uh, how, how does it actually look. So yeah, this would be um, a quick overview of the dashboard for um, visualization purpose. So when, when you like 
upload your data or you pull your data from a repository, like the first type of uh, um, visualization you, you will typically get is here, uh, yeah, like a, a 2D heat map where you basically see like the full um, LCMS run. Then you get quick XICs, so you can like type in um, a mass and a mass error and it, it will extract an extracted ion chromatogram for you. And then obviously you will have um, a total ion chromatogram here on the, um, on the bottom left as well as uh, MS and MSMS -MS spectra. All right, and then what about the, the sharing? So now each visualization basically generates a very long and unique URL that you can easily share with your peers. So you can just email this to somebody or like put it in a, in a Google Doc or um, convert it to a QR code or uh, put it in your paper. So that way like the people can then like basically just paste this into their um, web browser and open the particular visualization that you had in front of you. But as it's all happening in the cloud, we can also do real-time um, yeah, like updates by kind of like um, uh, a synchronous real-time visualization link that you have to specifically generate for each session. And then you can share this with your peers. And then while you're in a meeting, for example, if you change settings in the dashboard, it will automatically update for all the users that view this. So it's kind of like Google Docs for, for mass spec um, data visualization. But okay, I promised you, like, let's also like take a look at it. Um, uh, so yeah, how do you, you get data into the dashboard? So I told you there's different ways. And like, I think the most generic one is if you have um, a classic molecular networking task already and you click on uh, one of the nodes in this network viewer and go to the cluster spectra, there is now a link that says a uh, few LCMS file or so. But um, because maybe you don't have all uh, a GMPS um, networking job available, I also prepared a QR code for you so we can open this in a second. And yeah, just to give you some background, so this data comes from um, like a native metabolomics experiment my coworker Allegra Aaron and I performed to find new siderophores, and in particular from E. coli, um, Yersinia bactin will be will be visualized in that. And yeah, how. You can get to this, so if you want, you can, you can scan this, this QR code. Unfortunately, tiny URLs are kind of like blocked here in this environment, so I had to put this very long dashboard link on our web page. So yeah, you can scan the QR code, or you can type in quickly like the URL there, and you should find um, a second link that then will bring you to this longer uh, dashboard link. So yeah, um, please give it a try. That's for us very useful because then later we can also check um, how many um, visualizations at the same time we, we could handle. And then, yeah, as I, as I mentioned, um, you would basically then get from like a node from a particular compound directly into like the files uh, that this node came from. And in particular, it also like generates directly the XIC of the mass that we were looking at. In our case, I, I said this were um, a siderophore, Yersinia bactin, and then yeah, it basically pre-populates the XIC option fields here on the top right with the mass of Yersinia bactin, which would be um, 482. And you can see very nicely, oh, there's actually two peaks, right? And now what before in the classic molecular network eventually uh, was only one node with the mass um, 482. We can inspect now here in the dashboard and see, okay, Perhaps they're like isomers, right? So then, um, yeah, we could further investigate this, and I think it really becomes like a nice way to, to control and to inspect the data. But there's more to that. So I can also now load in more files into the dashboard and then kind of like ask already the question, okay, how are the XIC changes between two sample groups, for example? And in our case here for, for E. coli Nissel, we actually had a knockout mutant for Yersinia bactin. So I differentiated um, here basically through um, this two USI, how does this work? Um, through this two uh, USI groups, like the triplicates of like the wild type versus the knockout I had, and then I see nicely, okay, I only get like these two peaks in actually my wild type, and when I look at the uh, um, uh, box plots, which will be displayed a little bit farther down, I think it, it's very obvious that, yeah, this is indeed uh, uh, Yersinia bactin, perhaps we have diastyromeres from it because we don't see these two peaks um, in the knockout mutant. 
All right. So now, okay, so I showed you how to um, get like quant information out of the dashboard for now this particular species. But of course, in our data and non-targeted experiments, there's uh, much more to it. Um, so what about like launching feature finding directly out of the dashboard? And I think that's another very cool feature. When you go to this LCMS viewer options, you will f see that there is a little like field that allows you to activate feature finding options. And here in our case, well, I would perhaps uh, activate this for my favorite tool, um, MZMine, and we can launch feature finding directly within the dashboard for a file selected. So then, yeah, basically a new field would appear where we can um, define a couple of very rough settings, which we found um, to be perhaps most crucial for feature finding, and then like perform this in real time in your browser. And then what will happen in this um, 2D um, heat map is that for each feature that was detected, those will be now displayed as a, as a green diamond within um, this 2D heat map. Now we can like perhaps optimize the settings and, and see, okay, does that make sense? Is, does that look good? Is it too much, too little? Um, and then once we're happy with it, we can click this button, run feature finding at GMPS, which then will actually bring us to a Proteo safe workflow where we now can load in our full data set and la launch this through the GMPS server at the, at the larger scale. In particular, for reproducible and fast analysis with multiple data sets, I, I found that quite useful as, yeah, like I'm not gonna need to like waste resources on my on my local computer for doing that. Okay. So now we may have features. What about annotations? Of course, like the viewer also allows us to inspect um, MSMS spectra. So here on this 2D heat map on the on the um, top left, you can see that um, each MSMS event in our non-targeted um, MSMS data is indicated through um, a blue cross, right? And we can see, okay, we have some nice MSMS coverage here. Um, and when we click on an individual um, uh, MSMS marker, we will then basically update the MS view on the right here, and it will display then the particular MS MS spectrum for us. So we can see, okay, does that look good? Is this nice? Um, but yeah, as we're in the web browser, we can of course also directly match this against like the GMPS libraries. So you will see that under um, this MS MS spectra, there is a, a panel which has GMPS library as uh, yeah, one of the fields, and you will see already, as I update this, it will tell me already, are there any putative hits against the GMPS library? And then when I say, oh, cool, there might be something, I, I click on this, then like a new window will pop up where I then also like, can specify cosine cutoff, mass accuracy, and so on, and then perhaps get here my identification right out of the dashboard. And in our case here, surprise, surprise, um, the spectra matched very well against the Yersinia back then. But okay, what about contextualization and larger scale meta-analysis? So again, as this is all happening online, we have like the unique opportunity to also match this directly to all the rest of um, public data in the massive repository. And therefore, we can use this other button here, which is called uh, MAST. So MAST is basically um, yeah, uh, a mass spectrometry search tool for the full repository. So think about PLAST for sequences. This is MAST for spectra. Um, so what we can do here is we just click um, on masked spectrum and basically also a, um, a new Proteo safe workflow will appear where we can now launch such a repository scale analysis of this particular MSMS spectra that we selected and match it against the entire public space of massive GPS. And then when we look at the results, then we will see, okay, these are like all the other data sets in which this particular spectra appears in. And now, okay, for Yersinia Bakhtin, we know, of course, it's a um, cider for it's maybe a new uh, sink binder. It, it has some role in inflammation in the gut. But with this meta-contextualization, if this would have been an unknown, this may give me completely unique angles to look at this compound and maybe like about appearance, about certain phenotypes, I can further contextualize um, actually my, my finding. All right, so yeah, I hope you're gonna uh, keep playing a little bit with this and, and find find it useful um, for different stages of your research. So right now, yeah, like we use it on a daily basis in, in my lab for like the research phase between yeah like uh, the students, the collaborators, um, basically everybody in the lab. But then also as we move on and hopefully um, we'll 
get a paper into like the review phase, we share the links in the manuscript or in the SI with, with the, um, yeah, the reviewers and later on the community to allow like transparent um, and reproducible inspection um, of, of our data and analysis. And then, yeah, like hopefully once the review is done and, and people uh, like the work and it gets published, then also these links, of course, remain in the SI or manuscript. And hopefully in the long run, people can like quickly inspect the data and yeah, make it just like a little bit easier for everybody to, to reproduce what, what we've been doing. So yeah, with this, uh, I want to wrap up, and I hope I uh, can convince you that yeah, like the GMPS board, uh, dashboard is, is easily accessible. In fact, you hopefully just scanned the QR code. Um, it's web-based. There is no software you need to install. Um, it's broadly applicable as we use open um, uh, data formats. It uh, should theoretically work with, with all um, vendor-based um, mass spectra. It integrates with the community, so we did quite some effort to like bring different public repositories on board, so you can not only pull from Massive, but also from Metabolites, Metabolomics Workbench, uh, Proteomics data from Pride, and so on. Um, and then, yeah, like we, we really hope that this will foster collaborative um, inspection and analysis um, uh, of mass spectrometry-based uh, uh, metabolomics data. And yeah, again, feel free to, to try it out. It would be awesome to, to get feedback, so what does not work, so we're still actively developing it. Um, and yeah, I hope it's, uh, it's useful for your research. Okay, yeah, thanks a lot for listening, and also thanks a lot for, to, to Ming, who, yeah, is, again, like, is, is really like the brain uh, behind the code of the dashboard, and also to Peter Dorstein, um, who actually allowed us to work on this as a, as a little side project while we were both uh, postdocs in his lab. And then also, this has been not an effort between few, few people, but a lot of people were um, involved in the development and beta testing, which you can see here are all authors in our um, little uh, paper we wrote about it. And then, yeah, last but not least, also thanks to my, my lab in, in Tübingen for being a fun team to work with. All right, thanks. Okay.